Today we'll be talking about action cameras and ND filters, when to use them and when definitely not to use them. Let's go! So Freewell were kind enough to send me their all-day six-pack ND filter pack. In here you find five ND filters and one circular polarizer. Now the polarizer really is a game changer because when you use that you're blocking out all the reflected light which means that the sky is going to be bluer and you will have no glaring from the sun especially after a rainy day. We use that a lot in photography and a polarizer a definite game changer. But also you find the ND8, ND16, ND32, ND64 and an ND1000. Well we'll get to that one later on. So first of all, why do we use ND filters? ND filters are used to block the sun from coming in through the lens. This way you can slow down your shutter speed. Now the whole idea is to have that 1 50th of a second shutter speed which gives you an equivalent motion blur to what our eyes naturally see. Now but there's a catch when it comes to action cameras because there's only really two scenarios where you would really want to use that slow shutter speed. Now the first scenario where I would recommend using an ND filter on an action camera is whenever you want to get those slow panning cinematic shots. There you definitely need to have that 1 50th of a second shutter speed because if you're shooting with 24 or 25 frames per second that's not enough frames to stitch the images together. Now you can see an example here. A one time shot without an ND filter with the shutter speed of way over 1 200th of a second and then the second time with 1 50th of a second. But pay attention to how the camera is actually moving. There is no shaking involved in this shot. So this is how a vlogging scene looks like with 1 50th of a second shutter speed. I mean you can see that the background is smoothed out because of the motion blur but you know it's just the shakiness back there in the highlights that kind of gives it away. So 1 50th of a second definitely not fast enough for handheld vlogging. And this is how it looks now with a faster shutter speed. So I've taken my ND32 off and my shutter speed is way over 1 200th of a second. And you can see the background is nice and smooth. The stabilizer is working well and well it's just a better, you know, smoother image. Okay, but why is that 1 50th of a second so important? Well, it all comes down to that 180 degree shutter rule. Now, I will not go into that in this video. I'll do like a whole separate video how the 180 shutter rule pretty much saved the whole cinematography. But it's been here since the beginning of filmmaking. So therefore, we've gotten used to seeing those 24 frames per second blended together nicely with that 1 50th equivalent shutter speed. But then again, why are action cameras not ideal for this. Well, it comes down to the stabilization. You see, action cameras stabilize their videos after the video is recorded. And if you record a video with just 1 50th of a second shutter speed, you have recorded all the motion blur alongside with it. Now, if you're walking with the camera, you're shaking it and those micro shakes cause motion blur and those are recorded in the video. So then afterwards, once you stabilize the video or when the camera stabilizes it internally, you get those flickers and jitters in the highlights and the whole thing just looks really bad. You know, but it gets even worse if you mount this on a mountain bike and go down a downhill range with that 1 50th of a second shutter speed. Now the motion bar is going to be there, but the video is going to be completely useless. I'm gonna use my guinea pig here, Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello. I'm gonna strap the action camera on him and then he'll be running back and forth and we'll try with different shutter speeds. So you will see how much a difference an ND filter makes for good and for the bad. So come on. And by the way, if you're wondering, this is a GoPro chest strap. I mean, the cool thing about action cameras is that you can use, you know, like any accessory from any camera. I do, however, have the DJI magnetic mount on here. So let's mount the DJI. Like this. Run, Alex, run, run, run! Okay, nice and clean. So let's just pop this guy on. Now pops on nice, it holds on nicely. So it's not going to fall off. Let's do another running test. 
So this is where shooting your action shots with faster frame rates and faster shutter speeds well just looks so much better. And if you play that back on a faster timeline, let's say 50 frames per second, you're going to get that smooth video game look. And the motion blur in this situation really isn't even necessary. So therefore, Envy filters here also completely unnecessary unless you attempt to slow down the video. So you're shooting at 100 frames per second, your shutter speed should be at least one two hundredths of a second. But then when you slow everything down to those 25 frames per second, you will get an equivalent shutter speed of 150th, so the cinematic motion blur. And here you can see a very poor example of this. Okay, but why do we need so many ND filters? Why not just one? Well, it depends on how bright the scene is. Since your shutter speed is not going to be changing and you preferably want to have your ISO at the lowest on an action camera, well then you need to match the ND filter based on the environment that you're shooting in. So on a really bright sunny day, ND32 or 64 is going to be ideal. If it's cloudy, if it's a little bit darker, then ND16, ND8 are going to be the ideal ones. And that ND1000, well there's only one use case for that one, which is also the second reason why you really need ND filters for action cameras. One thing that makes a time-lapse look really awesome is motion blur. Now you can add that in post-production, but it's always going to look best if you actually capture the motion blur while you're recording. And if you want to do this in the midday sun and you want to use a shutter speed of let's say one tenth of a second, well then you need a very very strong ND filter to block all of that sun. And this is where the ND1000 comes into play. So here you can see an example of using an ND1000 during the midday sun. It's I mean, it just looks awesome. And if you compare it to like no ND filter and just auto exposure with shutter speeds way over one two hundredths of a second, well, the one on the right definitely looks much better. case that I would use ND filters on an action camera is this. So a stationary camera, 1 50th of a second shutter speed and well nothing's moving. So technically you can turn Rocksteady off and get an even wider shot. So this is as wide as it gets on the DJI Osmo Action 4. Now in this scenario I would definitely use manual settings, so shutter speed 1 50th and my ISO I would set to 100 because I can change my exposure with the NDs. If I need to raise the ISO I would rather lower the ND filter. So instead of 32, which I'm using right now, I would go for 16. The goal is to keep your ISO as low as you can, but retain that 1 50th of a second shutter speed. So in this case, I mean, like an ideal scenario. The one thing that's really awesome is the circular polarizer. It snaps on just like the ND filter, so by friction. Now I have two glasses that are rotating one relative to the other and once you line them up, you're going to start blocking all the reflected light. And this is going to make the sky pop and really blue. So this is like always going to be on my camera. This is like really a useful thing. Look at how much fish we have in here. So if I turn the polarizer off, you can see the reflections in the water, but then if I turn it on, like rotate it, then you can see through the water, at least to some degree. Anyway, this was my short review of the Freewell ND filters for the DJI Osmo Action 3 and 4. If you guys want to try these out, use the link in the description. It's an affiliate link, so you're actually helping me out this way. And thank you Freewell for sending these over. I will definitely be using this in my future videos. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and you can watch one of these two videos if you want to stay. Bye bye.